Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. On Thursday, October 30th, 1947, the airwaves in Baltimore reverberated like they had never reverberated before. And that's because on that day, 75 years ago, we got our first television station, WMAR. Um, today, I'm out here on York Road on the city county line, and behind me is WMAR's uh, headquarters. But it didn't get its start here, it got its start downtown. And that's where we're going to start in 1947. Back then, the Baltimore Sun uh, Papers, and that's Papers Plural, uh, was thinking about expanding into new media. The Sun, of course, got started in 1837 by pioneering newspaper man Aruna S. Abel. But in the 40s, they planned to expand into television and radio. They had planned a new radio station, uh, FM radio station, um, that they called WIYY. And that, in fact, did get off the ground in uh, 1948, so a year later. As well as uh, they had planned an AM radio station called WMAR, uh, which never got off the ground. But WMAR-TV very much did get off the ground uh, in 1947. Not here, but uh, in a, at the top of a building uh, called 10 Light Street. 10 Light Street has gone through various names uh, over its uh, uh, long, long history. But back in 1947, it was clearly the best building uh, to, for a new uh, TV station. At 34 stories, uh, the signal could be broadcast all over uh, Baltimore and indeed uh, the central Maryland area. Um, so uh, from that top of the 34 story building uh, is where WMAR got its start. So what did it first broadcast uh, this first television station in Maryland? Well, if you were lucky enough to tune in on uh, th at precisely 3 p.m. on that day, you would have first seen an image of the clubhouse at Pimlico, and then you would have heard a voice from a gentleman named Jim McManus, who uh, proceeded to broadcast uh, not one but two horse races at Pimlico. So our first television broadcast uh, was horse races at Pimlico. Incidentally, McManus changed his name to McKay, and as Jim McKay, he went over to ABC and and many of us knew him uh, as the host of ABC's Wide World of Sports um, and also as the host of a number of Olympics. If WMAR showed its uh, Maryland roots, uh, both with its name, MAR, Maryland, and its first broadcast, Pimlico, Preakness, it also showed its roots uh, with another one of its early on-air personalities. And that was a woman named Helen Dutch Bentley. Bentley had been the maritime editor for the Baltimore Sun, and she uh, soon joins WMAR. AR as the hostess of a show called The Port That Built a City. So for an hour a week, people tuned in to listen to Miss Bentley uh, talk about shipping and transportation. They loved it, and they loved her. She was elected several times to the U.S. House of Representatives, and where she continued to champion always the Port of Baltimore. And just about 10 years ago, the port, in recognition of her lifetime of commitment, uh, changed its name to the Helen Dutch Bentley Port of Baltimore. Um, if the Sun placed a bet on television in the 1940s, it was a good bet. By 1950, more people were watching television than listening to the radio in the 6 to 10 o'clock hour. And by 1953, WMAR's uh, viewing area uh, had half a million televisions in it, nearly 90% of the families there. Um, with success came competition. A year after WAM, WMAR got its start, uh, we got our second TV station, WBAL, followed shortly by our third, WAAM, which we now know as uh, WJZ. Um, eventually, uh, WMAR uh, got sold from the Baltimore Sun, ending up with a Cincinnati-based company, the Scripps Company, which owns it today. All right, I want to wrap up, though, uh, by talking about three, really quickly, three shows uh, that were pretty popular, wildly popular, uh, back in the day. The first one, which began in 1951, was an all-female talk show with hostesses Polly Drummond and Ann Marr and Sylvia Scott. They would bring on, uh, always they would have a cup of coffee, always a cigarette in their hand and they would bring on um, celebrities like Ronald Reagan and the comedian Victor Borga and uh, a gentleman named Mike Todd. And this is where Mr. Todd announced to the world that he was going to marry Elizabeth Taylor. So pretty neat there. Um, rolling along in 1953, running all the way to 1994, WMAR brought us the pioneering kids show, Romper Room. Uh, we would join in with Miss Sally and Miss Nancy, uh, starting with the Pledge of Allegiance each time, and then be joined by their friend, uh, Mr. Doobie, an oversized bumblebee, 
and the three of them would teach kids lessons uh, on manners and how to be kind to each other. We'll read about some other animal friends another day in Romper Room School. Right now, it's time for me to look for you in my magic mirror. So put a great big smile on your face at home. Would you do that? Put a great big smile on your face at home. And I'll spin the magic mirror and make the magic work. Ready? Romper, bumper, stomper, boo. Tell me, tell me, tell me do. Magic mirror, tell me today. Did my friends at home have fun at play? Did you have a good time? There's Gary and Kathleen and Marianne and Sean and Anita, Christopher and Carrie and Ken and Margaret. And we'll see you all again tomorrow in the Romper Room School. The Romp Room, featuring Nancy Rogers, is a Burt Blaster production. It was so successful, it was franchised and showed not only all over the country, but all over the world in places like Japan and Finland and Australia. All right, final one I want to mention, which got it started in 1948, so really early. It borrowed a concept from radio, um, and it was called Dialing for Dollars. It did not have a super complicated plot line. Uh, basically, what would happen is the host, and for a long time, the host was a gentleman named Stu Kerr, who many of us would rem will remember. Uh, Stu would reach his hand into a pot and pull out a slip of paper. On the slips of paper were telephone numbers, and uh, he would pull out uh, the winning number and he'd dial it, he'd call up, and if you answered the phone, and if you knew the secret password that he had said earlier in the program, you won a little bit of cash. And apparently it was really entertaining to watch people win a little bit of cash, because that show, like Romper Room, was franchised and shown all across the country. So I'm going to end by saying from its uh, humble beginnings, the top 10 Light Street, 34 stories up, um, our own WMAR, our first uh, TV station, uh, brought us pioneering shows like Romper Room and entertaining, if maybe a little formulaic, uh, shows like Dialing for Dollars. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Channel 2, let's all be there. Doo -doo. Come on in. Oh. Our town's flowing, it's a pride we can't help showing, cause together we make Baltimore the best. Oh, Baltimore, let's all be there. From Channel 2, let's all be there. Side by side together, working hard to show we care. Channel 2, let's all be there. Doo -doo.